Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. We're in my kitchen and um, so tonight is Tuesday night. Uh, it's September 10th, so um, I don't know what video this little segment's going to wind up on, but it is seafood boil. Well, it's not really a seafood boil. It's a low country boil. So we like to do like Cajun food. So I have uh, some Cajun sausage here, some cut up red potatoes, corn, bunches of Old Bay. Uh, you can see the little pouch in there, crab boil pouch. Some uh, shrimp here, some fresh garlic, of course, a yingling to go with it. So we're about to get things boiling here and have us a nice little low country boil here at the Jones house. So um, I've got some really cool stuff laying out here that I'll uh, zoom in on in just a second. Um, I'm sending uh, a bunch of these kind of snook sort of line swim baits you know that I when I when I did this I thought about a snook if you've ever seen the fish the common snook he's got like a gray kind of gold dark top and then a, a white bottom like most fish do but they have that distinct black line right down the center so it's like a black bloodline um, it, it goes along their lateral line so uh, I'm sending those down to the Florida Keys um, a charter captain down there um, got a bunch of them from me, so we're gonna put the eyes on real quick and clear it up And I just kind of wanted to show these to you uh, while I'm kind of finishing them up here Because I think it's gonna be pretty cool and then we'll get to the video whatever video that is I don't know if I'm filming right after this or if I have to wait till tomorrow We'll see but wanted to go ahead and show you guys a pretty cool order Yeah, so we have ten of these that's the uh, stank X bape mold seven inch mold and then I'm including a free rocket uh, he didn't actually order this one, but I had one made, so I said, hey, I will send this down to him. So I'm, uh, I'm about to attach some eyes here. So I have these kind of silver hologram eyes. These are 12 millimeter to fit this mold. Um, ah, I have to stupid, never lose the cap on this because it'll never work right again. All right, we'll try this again. Yeah, a little dab of lock tie it on there 12 millimeter eye beautiful one thing I like about this mold you'll notice the eye is really recessed in there so when you're bringing this bait through the water if you encounter um, brush or grass or anything like that really nothing should hang on that eye and, and tear it out and uh, and I think that's a really good thing about this mold because I don't really clear dip this bait. And the reason for that, you'll see, are kind of these little wings that stick out here. I just feel like if you clear dip it, it's just gonna make things too bulky looking. And uh, just with, with the pattern on the side, you know, it, it kind of has some gills and these stripes and sort of a scale pattern. It just doesn't quite need a clear dip to shine up. I think it's shined up all on its own. And, uh, and then now we're gonna get over to the uh, to the big boys here. These are 15 inch eyes, uh, excuse me, 15 inch, wow. 15 millimeter eyes. And this is an, another sort of silver hologram. These are um, actually made for fly fishing, for, for tying big flies, if I can get them out. Jeez. So anyway, same thing here. A Little bit of Loctite. And then these have a pupil that actually like points. Good lord. And apparently a really good adhesive backing. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to make my eyes point forward. So just like that. I like to make it literally look forward. Like I guess you would see a fish, you know, I don't really want my eyeball facing upward. That's just me. And then these big baits, we are gonna clear dip. So I'll just show you one here with the eyes so that we don't make this video too long, but uh, yeah. Got the eye on there, perfect. All right, we're just about to start clear dipping, but wanted to show you a couple of cool bloodline swim baits that I made. This is with the Angling AI bloodline swim bait mold. It's an injection mold. 
where you uh, add this bloodline on the side there. So I had made these, it's sort of a light hitch pattern. I had made these earlier in the week and uh, posted them up for sale and luckily somebody jumped on them right away. So I'm about to bag these up and uh, send them on their way. But I thought they were really cool and I uh, figured I'd uh, show them on here uh, real quick. Boom shaka lock. All right, I know the light's looking a little funky with the sun coming in, but there you go. Pretty awesome. Okay, so what we're doing tonight is we're gonna take that leftover um, worm plastic that I used for the clear dip for all of these swim baits over here at the beginning of the video. I've got them laying out um, um, <clears throat> just to kind of let the um, clear dip kind of finish curing up overnight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the leftover clear dip from that because it's worm plastic, we're gonna make some worms. And since it's, a, since it's a September, mid-September now, we're getting close. We're, I mean, we're less than two months away from winter, which means shad bite. So we're gonna make some worms in a shad color. This is called Smoky Shad. And this color is actually the color that I made in my very first bait video on this channel, like a long time ago now. Um, but we're gonna revisit that color. Um, it's kind of a smoke gray with some flake and a white pearl laminate. So we're gonna make it in some ribbon tails and then some finesse worms. Um, because hey, tis the season to start thinking about the shad bite. They start getting out there on those big, big schools of shad, the bass group up. You can smack them on an Alabama rig. It truly is the most wonderful time of the year. And when you see the bass schooling, Sometimes they won't hit a moving bait, but if you drop a worm on them, especially shad color worm, sometimes you can get that big fish below all the little ones schooling. And um, it's not a bad idea to have some shad worms in the boat uh, when that's going on. Okay, so here we have our two sides. So the top side, so to speak, is like a black smoky gray. So we're gonna add just a few drops of black. All right, do three, start there. And again, this is just the leftover uh, clear dip from earlier. In fact, I don't know if it's actually all the way cooked back up or not. I may need to pop it, but yeah, there's a little bit of solid there, but I'll pop it back in. I mean, you can see how far just a little bit of black pigment goes. I mean, that is over two measuring cups of plastic and only three drops, so. That's actually looking good. Yeah, I keep getting these moths out here tonight. Get out of here. They keep trying to land in the hot plastic, which isn't gonna go well. All right, <clears throat> bottom side, white pearl. All right. Okay, not too much. That's a quarter of a teaspoon right there and we didn't use all of it. Um, so we're gonna start with that and see how we like it. You know, you can always add more, but you can't take it out once you've put it in there. So whenever you're kind of experimenting with colors or you're trying to recreate a color that you haven't made maybe for a long time, um, you know, it's, it's, it's best to start with smaller measurements than larger. I like that a lot. It's not too thick. I'm digging it, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Okay. Now we add our flake. So the smoky side gets all the flake. And we're gonna do a little bit of black hex, 0 0.035 black, okay? And then what makes it look really good is the blue. This is again 0 0.035 hexagon blue flake. I like to get my standard glitters from Lurecraft. They sell some awesome, awesome flakes. I like to get my crazy glitters from like MF and Lure Works, um, but my Standard stuff here, um, I like Lurecraft. And then little silver. And this looks really good in my opinion once you get it all stirred up, which we will uh, do now. I may need to add some flake here or there, but that's the general idea of it. 
Yeah. Okay. That's looking about right. Perfect. Yeah. So you see that right there. That laminated with the uh, white pearl makes a really great shad color. And you can do this in swim baits, um, jerk baits, um, anything you want. Just since this was worm plastic, and uh, and I, and I like to have shad worms on the boat in the winter time, which you know when I'm on the boat, which is rare. But <clears throat> this is a great color uh, if you've never made it. I think you'll enjoy making this one if you uh, want to try it at home. Um, if not, you know, hope you enjoy watching it here. But uh, we're gonna put these back in the microwave, heat them up for just a little bit more or a little bit longer, and, uh, and then we'll start actually running some baits here. Okay, here we go. We have our two colors here. <clears throat> this is the Bass Tackle Twin Injector, Dual Injector as some people call it. Comes with this blending block here. And that's how you do your laminates. So we're just gonna draw up plastic from each side and move it over to our blending block. All right. And then we're gonna push down with nice, even pressure. All right, hold a little pressure there on the mold. We'll kind of move over here so that we can let that sprue there on the right kind of uh, settle down a little bit. Okay, now we'll do this one. These are nine inch ribbon tails and seven inch ribbon tails. If you watch my channel a lot, you're pretty familiar with these worms. I make them a lot on here, all right. Hold a little pressure. Okay. Looking good, feeling good. We'll put these back in the cups. And these will go back in the microwave so that we can make more. Okay. Let's see what we have. We'll uh, start with the big worm, of course. But first, drum roll please. Maybe a little uh, paradiddles. Some flam accents. Flam drags. Flam fives. All right, that's enough goofing off. As you can tell, I'm uh, itching to like be a drummer again. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. There's your laminate. So you can see the bottom side is the uh, white pearl. And, and I mix these up pretty light. It's pretty translucent, very see-through, <clears throat> but a gorgeous color. That's about as pretty as it gets when it comes to shad worms. That's, that's my favorite worm color to make if I'm going for shad. I haven't found, um, you know, I, I have other shad colors that I make that I love but this is my favorite one probably in a worm. We'll go ahead and put those in the bath and then we'll take a look at these other big worms here. Yep, looking good. Alrighty. And we'll look at the sevens. Go ahead and take out both sevens here. Yeah, let's see, let's get those off the sprue. There you go. Yep. Smoky shad, smoking shad, whatever you want to call it. Really great color. And uh, as you can see, killer in a worm. Not all shad colors have to be uh, made into to big, big shiny swim baits, you know? They can be worms too. Okay, and now we're gonna do some finesse worms. So the top color is the left side. It needs to go on the left side of the blending block. So we'll switch them up here to where our uh, smoke gray color is on the left side. So that's gonna be our top color. And again, here we go. Into the blending block. All right, holds pressure. This particular mold, I have to top off my sprues or else the top bait cavity just never fills in all the way. 
That's the only thing I do not like about this mold. All right, I may run out of plastic here. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have quite enough, but we'll try it anyway. What the heck? Might get one or two out of it. And that may have filled. Nope, did not fill. That's okay. That's the way the cookie crumbles, right, sometimes? All right, so now we're just gonna kinda hand pour, top off these uh, sprues. All right. And uh, we should have some nice finesse worms. All right, let's take a look here. See what we get. Yeah. There you go. Tell you what, it's almost too see-through in the uh, thinner finesse worm. You know, there's not enough plastic there for the colors to like get a little thicker. But that's still absolutely gorgeous. It's it's like blue flake ice almost. Really, really, really great. You know, you can see in the sprue since it's thicker. It you know that's a little more how it's supposed to look in my head uh, you know there, there's enough of each side for you to kind of see each side but uh, that's how it goes in bait making sometimes what works in one mold um, doesn't always look as good in another mold so you know you would sometimes need to adjust your colors um, just depending on which mold you're going to use even if it's quote the same color I think this is the mold that didn't work Eh, we'll take a look here. Yeah, those are hollow. I think these bottom three filled. Check them for pocket air pockets. That one has a little bit of mess up in it. Yeah, those those two right there are good. Yeah, that's the one that ran out of plastic. <clears throat> but these did not in this one, so this one should should look good. Again, sometimes that top cavity, uh, the plastic draws in. All right, looking great. So uh, let's see, so far we have that right there. Isn't that cool, y'all? Shad worms. All right, curiosity got to me and I have to make a few jerk baits here. Even though these will be a little softer than you're probably used to, um, they'll have killer action. You can, you can believe that with this worm blend. But I figured can't do a shad color without making a traditional shad bait. Even though this is really just to kind of showcase a great worm color and to kind of, um, you know, it, it explore the whole idea of shad colors for worms. And uh, we'll, use, we'll use this plastic on some of the hand pour worms too. But I wanted to uh, make a few jerk baits real quick and then we'll kind of finish the video on out from there. Alright, real quick you can see I've got the worms laid out that were in the bath. They had uh, been in there long enough and were starting to get a little bit cloudy from the water. But let's take a look at these jerk baits. See what we have. Oh mama. Look at that, y'all. Gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, I'm not like trying to toot my own horn, but and this isn't even my color. I think I originally saw this um, in one of the big like from one of the big box brands. Um, but I kind of made it my own i guess hopefully but it's it's awesome it is awesome i think it's actually a pretty common stick worm color i think that's where i first saw that it was actually a worm uh odd you know ironically enough maybe that's why i think it's such a good worm color but yeah check out the jerk baits in it oh awesome 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 and then we have our hand pour worms over here that hopefully are Kind of sort of starting to set up. It takes these a while to, to really set up in this mold. Let's just kind of see if we can get one out to look at. 
I know that these have a lot of flashing on that end from uh, my poor pouring. See what I did there? Poor pouring. All right, get that out. Ugh. Definitely gonna require some trimming. You know what? I'm gonna bath that real quick so that it's not gooey in my hand. Come on. Well, it's still a little bit gooey. But once I kind of get some of this flashing off, you can see um, that the color is quite lovely. This is just the worst job pouring. Ugh. Anyway, I'll have to take the scissors to that, but we'll get that one in the bath and uh, might have to give these a little bit longer to set up. We'll get this wide one out here. Yeah. Not my best pouring job, but a really, really great color. So, anyway, we'll get those out and cleaned up a little bit. And uh, then we're going to call it a night. Okay, here we go. Kind of a little group shot. There are the hand pours. We clean them up a little bit. We'll probably need to do a little bit more work. But here we go. Nine inch ribbon tail, seven inch, six and a half finesse worm, five inch uh, fork tail jerk bait, split tail jerk bait. And, uh, and then of course the hand pours. So I think they're pretty cool. And never ever think that you cannot take a shad color and turn it into a worm. Quite the contrary. All right, everybody. Well, that's gonna wrap this video up. I'm filming this on September 11th, 9-11. So for those of you who were alive, uh, I don't know how young my audience is, but you know, I was in ninth grade when the planes hit the uh, World Trade Center. I was coming, I was kind of between uh, PE class or gym class and Spanish class, which I failed. Um, I was, I can't speak any foreign, I can speak a few German phrases because I love German beer and the culture and the food, but um, I was very bad at Spanish. So, you know, it's just one of those world events that you just remember forever. And, uh, you know, never forget the people who um, came to the rescue that day and the people who were killed. I mean, my dad was a fireman for 30 years here in Tallahassee. Over 300 firemen died trying to um, rescue people from the burning building. So it, it hit close to home for us. A couple of the Tallahassee Fire Department um, employees actually had to go to New York um, to, to help out. I mean, it was just that big of a disaster. And uh, they actually brought me back a bit, a, a concrete chunk of one of the towers. So I have that at home as a reminder. It was a very, very awful event perpetrated by some awful people. So um, never forget 9-11, that's for sure. But anyway, um, on a more positive note, um, I hope you guys like these worms. As usual, you can buy them if you want. Um, if not, they're going in my tackle box. I, I keep, uh, luckily, thank you guys, but I keep selling all the stuff I make, so my tackle box is gonna be pretty empty. Um, but I guess that's not a bad problem. I can run some of these in an emergency, I guess, if I need to. I'm, I'm hoping to do a lot of fishing this weekend. I have a really fun, special trip planned um, in November. Uh, I'm, I'm going fishing out of town for a whole weekend with a couple of very special guests. It's going to be an awesome weekend, full of great content, full of bait making content. I'm actually going to be making lures in somebody else's shop. I think it's going to be an awesome time and I can't wait. But until then, we're going to continue on here trying to make the best baits that we can on camera for you guys. Um, so thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time.